In this video, I am going to talk about what are regression splines. So, in the situation where you have nonlinear relationship between the target variable and the predictor, you uh, use a number of types of regression models. Uh, one of the type is regression spline. So, uh, in the polynomial regression model that we have discussed in another video, polynomial regression model. So, we use higher order polynomials for the predictor variables. So, we will take an example. So, we have age as the predictor variable and salary as the target variable. Now, you know that salary would increase with age and then it saturates up to one point and then it eventually goes down, right? So, you cannot fit a uh, you know, straight line to this, uh, you know, to, to this, to model this relationship, right? So, normally we use polynomial regression for this, okay? So, uh, a polynomial regression would be salary, which is target variable, beta naught, which is the uh, constant, and then we have slope as age, the first uh, variable is age, then we will also take the, uh, the quadratic term, a square, also the cubic term. So, you can use as many uh, polynomial terms, but we will go ahead with only three ones. Okay. Now, this is one way of, you know, modeling a nonlinear relationship. So, polynomial regression is one way of doing that. But the performance, and it has been seen that the performance of polynomial regression is not quite good. And it can be made better. And that's where regression spline uh, come into picture. Okay. And we'll understand how is it different from a polynomial regression. In regression spline, you first, uh, you know, divide your entire sample into few segments. Now, you can see in the first segment, let's say, this one is increasing in order, right? It's increasing. You can see, you can actually fit um, a straight line to this. So, uh, okay. So, we can actually fit a straight line to this data, right? It perfectly fits the data. In the second, uh, well, in the second uh, section of this data is more of a constant, right? It's parallel line to the x-axis. So, you can fit a straight line again to this data. The third one is a downward sloping line. So, you can fit again a straight line here, right? So, this would fit better than simply fitting a polynomial equation to this data. So, the idea is to split the data points uh, in into few segments so that there is uniform uh, relationship in a, in a small Sam, uh, sub sample or, or in one of the segment. So, like in the first segment, you have a uniform relationship. That means there is only upward sloping relationship, right? There is no multiple type of relationship in this case. Similarly, in the next segment, you have, uh, you know, again a linear relationship that you can see. In the third segment also a linear relationship with a downward sloping. So, instead of fitting a single regression line, we instead go in for a um, multiple regression line with threshold. So, we have threshold C1 and C2. Okay. So, instead of a single polynomial, we'll, we're going to have three polynomials, uh, three uh, polynomial regressions. The first one would be, okay, I'll go to the next slide, uh, salary, uh, beta naught 1 plus beta 1 1 is and beta 1 2 h square. Okay. We will take the first two order only to the uh, quadratic terms I am going to take. You can use the third order or fourth order as well depending on uh, whether your model is working fine or not. So that we will get to know through cross validation of course. So, this equation will be fit when A is, is less than C1. And what is C1? C1 is the first threshold. 
okay and then we'll have another uh, quadrat uh, polynomial regression so this would be beta 1 1 plus sorry this is beta 1 0 this is beta 2 0 2 1 h plus beta 2 2 h square and this will be uh, this regression equation of polynomial regression equation will fit to the data when h lies between uh, c2 c1 and c2 when h lies between c1 and c2 so this portion this portion i'm talking about okay so when your h lies between c1 and c2 we fit another polynomial regression term and the third would be uh, 3 0 plus 3 1 h plus beta 3 2 a square when a is, is greater than c2 so instead of fitting a single uh, polynomial uh, equation a polynomial regression equation to the data we are fitting three polynomial regression equation and that would increase the performance of the model and that's the idea of you know regression spline so we have you know more parameter to determine okay uh, we have the beta parameters okay so how many beta parameters we have now so with a single polynomial regression we have just three parameters right now we have nine parameters we also need to find out what are c1 and c2 right what the thresholds are and how many thresholds are to be there that's important right they're also to be found out through uh, different means and one of the most commonly used means is by using cross validation okay now we'll discuss about uh, how to you know go about uh, determining how, how many thresholds how many threshold points we also call them as knots how many knots are going to be there and then where to place them okay so how do we know that where exactly you have you you should have the threshold and second question is how many threshold such threshold are to be there okay now there is no thumb rule as such that you know these many threshold or this is where you have to place your threshold you do it uh, through cross validation so uh, the number of threshold that gives you the best fit is going to be used so you try it for uh, too many thresholds and see where exactly you're getting your taste error as the minimum so wherever you're getting a minimum taste error so you know you started with s only c1 and you got a taste error and then you started with c1 and c2 and then you record your test error and then with three thresholds c1 c2 and c3 and you again record your test error and see for which for what number of thresholds you're getting the test error as the minimum and that's what you're going to go ahead with okay so that's the idea about that idea of uh, you know splitting your data uh, into few segments and then fitting polynomial regression lines known as regression splines so if you have k number of thresholds if you have k thresholds you will have k plus 1 you have k plus 1 uh, regression lines k plus 1 regression right so we have just seen we had two we have two thresholds now so how many regression equations we were able to fit three right one two and three all right so that's about it uh, there are few other things to remember while using uh, you know regression spline is that uh, you just have to consider what is known as continuity continuous adjunct continuous constraint okay now what happens is that when you 
if I go back to our first slide, we have this uh, splits, right, uh, at C1 and C2. Now, it so happened that when you fit regression lines separately, they may not be continuous, right? You can have a regression line fitting like this. Uh, now, this is not continuous and this is not going to be uh, a proper way of fitting your data. Okay, so that problem you can face. So, the assumption, uh, so there is another constraint to be used while doing the optimization is to enforce continuity. So, you should have, uh, you know, that many number of threshold and you should place this threshold in such a way that ensure that there is continuity. That means, when you are fitting a regression line, it should be something like this. Okay, so the first segment second segment and third segment so it's proper conti it, it's continuous right there is nowhere it is uh, there is discontinuity so that's one important thing to remember now the most important thing when you actually do it in any software because uh, it, it, when you do it in software you don't have to do uh, the optimization part but the trickiest part is to find out uh, what is the uh, what 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 are the thresholds or how many thresholds so, how many thresholds is the key and where to place the thresholds are also the key. Many times you yourself have to plot it out. First, you visualize your data. You visualize your data uh, through, you know, different plots and see where exactly you can have the thresholds and give that as, you know, the input in the uh, command that you are using uh, in whatever software you are using. And if you are not sure about it, then try a few times and look at the cross validation error. You can do the k fold cross validation. Okay, do the k fold cross validation and see at what number of threshold and at what points you are getting the minimum value. It's a difficult task. You have to run the you know regression lines a number of times. You can write uh, a, a code uh, and keep on changing your values. You know, you can uh, you can have many such scenarios, maybe thousands or maybe tens of thousands of such scenarios, and see where exactly you are getting the minimum cross validation error. It's computationally intensive, but end of the day, that that will increase the efficiency of a model. So what we have learned is that polynomial regression, although it looks easy, comparatively it's easier. It is not very efficient, but if you use multiple polynomial regression equation by dividing the sample into subsamples through different thresholds or knots, you will get more efficient uh, regression or classification model. Well, the same concept can be, uh, you know, same concept can be, you know, extended to a classification model as well. So you can use a logistic regression or a linear discriminant analysis model by you know dividing this data into different splits and so on you know so that can will be used there as well thank you